Hey, so let's go back in time a couple of weeks to when I pulled this pony motor off of my John Deere 830 because I was having problems with the starting transmission. I did a couple of videos where I tore the, where I split the transmission from the pony motor and I found that I had a, a bad clutch. All of the facings had broken off that clutch disc. I also found that I had a problem with the starting gear. There's a brake pad that rests behind that and that was worn and so it wasn't holding the starting gear stationary like it should have been. So I did a couple of videos um, focusing on those repairs and I'm hoping that by the time you're seeing this video that this pony motor is back on my tractor and it's functioning like it should. But what I want to do now, and this is a separate video because of that, that last video was getting a little bit too long um, and I wanted in this video to, to kind of do a health check on this pony motor. So what I want to do is I want to lift this up, drain the oil out of this. The oil probably has only about 10 or 12 minutes of runtime on it. But I want to get that oil out and then flip this engine on its side, open up the access cover and look inside to see if there's sludge or grime at the bottom of the crankcase. And also just kind of do a quick check on the connecting rods to see how much play there is there. Like I say, just a health check to make sure that this thing is healthy before I put it back on the tractor. Um, I don't want to have any catastrophic failures, so by doing this health check now and checking these things, I can sleep a little bit better at night knowing that the internals of this engine are in good working order. So without further ado, let's lift this thing up, drain the oil out, flip it on its side, and take a look inside this crankcase. So far the oil looks, like I say, pretty clear and pretty clean. So we can also take this opportunity to see how the draining uh, works on the pony motor. You loosen this bolt right here, this is the drain plug, and it allows oil to drain from the crankcase of the pony motor out the underside, out of this hole right here, and it drains straight from here into the crankcase of the big diesel engine. It's a little bit of sludge, but not too bad. So far, I'm liking what I'm seeing as I'm reaching around in the bottom corners of this. There's a I mean, there's a tiny bit of sludge, but it's really not too thick. And yeah, this isn't bad. I'm not feeling any chunks of anything. No grime, no grit. That's good. So I decided to pop this oil screen off right here so that I would have better access up into the bottom of the engine to see what it looks like. And everything looks really pretty good. As I reach in here and try to wiggle and feel for free play on these uh, connecting rods, I don't feel any movement. I can move them side to side. Like that but really radially nothing and so it's not very it's not a very scientific check but I do feel good about that and I wiped out you know all around here where we would have any sludge gathering and back here there's like a there's like a casting right here and on the back side of this I reached back there and felt for sludge and there was a tiny bit but really no nothing too bad so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put the screen back in place 
I made a new gasket and then I'll go ahead and put the uh, the base plate back in place and I think I'm happy with the internals of this engine. crankcase checked out and all that uh, cover put back in place I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fill up the crankcase with oil I think we've got about two quarts in here which is I think about what this little engine takes that's a little over one quart put in Hey, let's keep going. Right there, it registers right there. So it's full right now. So we've got fresh oil in the engine, but now there's one last thing that we need to do, and that is put the distributor on it. And that means we've got to retime the engine. So to time the engine, we've got a timing mark right here, and then back here on the flywheel, it, we need to turn the flywheel um, until we reach the spark number one wording and timing mark that's on the flywheel. So now, right before top dead center, we should see the spark number one, and we just turn that until they line up. Looks like we gotta go a little farther. Right there. I think that's pretty, no, not yet. Okay, that's lined up just perfect. So here's my distributor. This is actually a brand new distributor. I've, um, I bought this and you can see a video previously, I'll put a link to it in the description of this video, where it was the, when I was trying to get this pony motor started for the first time, and this was the distributor that was on there, and the coils are completely cracked and all the insulation is peeling off of them. Um, my spark plug wires are all shot. So, uh, surprisingly, I was getting spark out of this one side, but not this side. So, I ended up just buying a whole new distributor, and that's what this is. And now that we have the flywheel uh, positioned right, now we can go ahead and put this on the engine and then I'll show you what we've got to do next. We've got a gasket that goes on here and then basically there's just four screws. And then there's basically just four screws that are on the slots and those slots allow you to rotate this distributor forward or backward and uh, you have some timing adjustability with that. There's a puddle under my truck. those up when we're putting these screws in we got to tighten them up so they're just snug but we still want to be able to rotate this uh, we still want to be able to rotate the distributor I guess while we're talking timing we should also be talking about cylinder wires the front right cylinder uh, excuse me the top right cylinder wire right here coming out of the distributor 
goes to the front right uh, cylinder. This is piston number one. Bottom left, excuse me, bottom right goes to the back right. Same thing over on the left hand side. The top left cylinder, top left wire coming out of the distributor goes to the front left cylinder. And then the bottom left spark plug wire coming out of the distributor goes to the back left cylinder. So in case you didn't know that or you need to try to figure it out, that might be helpful. Okay, with all four of those screws installed, now we just rotate this all the way forward clockwise as far as it'll go. And then the rest of it has to be done while it's on the tractor or at least when, you're hooked, when it's hooked up to a six volt battery. So that'll be the next step. Okay, now that the pony motor is on the engine, we can finish timing it. So the flywheel is still in the same spot, haven't moved it. Now, what we need to do is remember we had this turned, rotated all the way forward. With that all the way forward, we're gonna go turn on the ignition right here. Turn the ignition on, lights on. Now we are going to rotate this forward until we see a spark at the number one points. Okay, I'm gonna rotate it forward. There we go. So that's timed. Now we just need to tighten those screws down and lock the distributor in place and we're good. It is a little bit of a chore to actually put this thing back on the tractor, so I'm glad that we took some time right now while it was off to check on those few things. I think it was time well spent, and now I feel comfortable running this thing. I don't need to worry about the internals. Um, pony motors are sometimes problematic. People, um, I've seen, I, well, I have my parts pony motor uh, through Rod, and I didn't want to have to worry about any of that. They're expensive to repair, so I'm glad that I took some time to check those things and it seems to run well. Thanks so much for watching guys and I will see you next week with another video.